Chris with Andrews Racing Transmissions here. We're going to talk about the 47 and 48 RE diesel overdrive. We're going to be assembling this overdrive. We offer this complete overdrive assembly and several different combinations of parts for these on our website, andrewsracingtrans.com. Click on select transmission 4748 RE. Click on overdrive assembly. You can see everything that we offer for these now. We're going to do some assembly. This obviously is completely disassembled. So first we start with a glass beaded overdrive extension housing. These housings are first completely disassembled. Everything is taken out, including all of the parking, pawl, and linkage. Um, the snap ring for your bearing is removed. It is then, it, it is first jet washed. It is then glass bead blasted. It is then, the threads are chased, not tapped. It is then blown out with air. And then it is solvented to get any remaining media out. And then we can start fresh with a clean extension housing. This 800 pound spring has been the topic of a lot of discussion, especially on YouTube. I don't watch a lot of transmission videos on YouTube, but some of the ones I've seen, they're kind of scary. So I'm going to show you how to press this hub and spring and sun gear assembly all together correctly so you don't have to be scared of it. Now, if you don't have a press and you don't want to deal with that, you could buy just this assembled from us. You could buy this in several different ways. You could buy this complete assembly core exchange on our website. Now, as far as the core exchange goes, if these are burned up and you send me a burned up overdrive, you're not going to get full core credits. So, um, keep that in mind when when you're buying these so i am assembling this 48re for a local customer who doesn't want to build the overdrive portion he knows how to build a three-speed torque plate and he's going to do that and then he's going to bolt our overdrive on so and he could be down the road now we offer this either in red racing you got a smooth overdrive brake smooth overdrive direct or we offer this in gpz overdrive brake with a borg warner yellow overdrive direct so we also, you need to replace this overdrive direct snap ring. These break often. That's something that definitely needs to get replaced. So we'll go ahead and start some of the assembly right now. As far as the your overdrive spring hub and sun gear, we start with a new sun gear and a new bearing and a new bearing plate. This sun gear over time can dig into this bearing plate and it can wear it out. So all this stuff is fresh, it's new. When you go to press this together now, Some people will want to press it like this in your press. Now, if you start pressing this down like this, you could side load this hub into the gear and it'll get, it'll get caught. It'll cause a bunch of wear in here. A bunch of metal will come out as you're pressing it. You don't want that because that's going to cause a bind when this thing goes to try and apply fourth gear. So, the way I press it, and this is a Miller 6227-1. Now, this is a good tool to have. You likely cannot get this anymore, but you could get something that's equivalent. The way you're going to want to press this is upside down. And I'll show you how we do it. You're going to want to press this upside down in your press, and then you can get access down here to install your round wire ring dunk your sun gear and transmission fluid we're going to go ahead and get this pressed and out of the way right now dunk this in transmission fluid now you're ready to press it together You want to make sure this goes smoothly. And you want to make sure you do it straight. If this starts to bind, you need to stop and figure out what's going wrong. This is going smoothly. Starting to feel the spring pressure a little bit. But the sun gear is pressing, pressing in straight.
Now, wait for this to peek out down here so you can install your wire ring, retaining ring. And I apologize, it's a little bit darker over here and it's a little bit messier on this side of the shop. But that's why I have a drop light here so you can kind of see a little bit better. And that is installed. We're gonna install our snap ring for our bearing. These are new from Chrysler. These do wear out. All of our parking mechanism for our parking pole and our output seal. The 47 is a little bit different than the 48. This is a 48, this is wider. They did change the parking system in this. The valve body parking rod is also different between the 47 and 48. So if you're interchanging stuff, you really have to keep in mind that a lot of the stuff will not interchange. I've got my seal installed. I've got all of my parking system installed, parking pawl, and snap ring for the bearing is installed. Assemble the gear train. You've got your overrunning clutch in here. You have a bearing in there. You have two bushings. The Overrunning clutch sprag assembly does not wear out on these unless something catastrophic happens So you could clean that and reuse it. Make sure you put it in the correct direction Overrunning clutch inner cam Gets installed next Like so now I like to put some lube in there some ATF 4 if you have a bottle like this you can use it I just use this no, no stick valve body spray to get something in there so that this is not running dry initially. Planetary, six pinion on the 48, obviously five pinion on the 47. Then we have our hub and spring and sun gear assembly which will set here. Let me get my bearing here. Green works good for sticking washers and bearings, but I'm not gonna go get that right now. I got a little blue. Your bearing here, make sure this goes on correctly. This is incorrect, obviously. This is correct, it needs to sit flush. Okay, set that in there. Let's go ahead and get some lube in for this planetary. Now you can be soaking your clutches as well, so plenty of fluid will end up down there. The proper stack on this is 10 overdrive direct frictions, nine overdrive direct steels. Soak your clutches. Get a setup shaft here. This is a cut down intermediate shaft that was damaged. This is really important that you do this because you'll have to press this assembly back together to get your overdrive direct snap ring in. So you'll have to do that. This is your bottom pressure plate. And then start putting in your clutches and your steel plates. Some people wipe these off, I don't. I wanna have as much fluid in there as I can. Alternate, obviously, between the friction and the steel. And once that's done, we'll go back to the press. Put your top plate on. And now it's back to the press to install our snap ring. Install your new Overdrive Direct Wavy snap ring. Press down so you can see the snap ring groove. And then install your snap ring.
install your bearing, snap ring groove faces up, snap ring, it's never easy on camera. Install your overdrive extension housing. Onto your gear train. Make sure you're snapping the seats all the way in here. It just took a little finagling, but now that snap ring is seated correctly in there. Install your super fancy ART snap ring access cover with O-ring. Dab a blue Loctite here on the Torx quarter by 20 bolts. Two snap rings go in, you have a wavy and you have a flat. Your flat snap ring goes in first. Flat snap ring, wavy, goes in next. Overdrive brake pressure plate, bottom pressure plate goes in next. There's only one pressure plate. Goes on the bottom, followed by GPZ overdrive brake friction, followed by a steel plate. Sorry, I just hit the tripod. The stack up on this is five G, um, frictions and five steel plates. Now, I am gonna install this dry. I will soak these clutches momentarily, but I want to get a gauge of where this wire snap ring is going to sit here. Now I'm going to tell you on this wire snap ring there is no published spec. My rule of thumb is about a spark plug gap. Now I've seen people use Play-Doh, all sorts of other things, and I don't do that. But I set this up here dry initially to see where this ring is sitting. If you have the correct clutch stack and the correct thicknesses of your frictions and your steel plates, then you won't have a problem, but you need to get a gauge of where this wire rings at now. It's always easier to do off camera. And I know you can't see this, but I'm going to show you a little bit better here. And you can see that gap there. Like I said, it's about a spark plug gap. To set this up correctly, you don't need Play-Doh and all that stuff. You need four things. This, 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 and a factory service manual. If you set this up the way Chrysler says, you'll have no problems, you'll have no overlap. Use Chrysler tools or equivalent, and you're going to be using these to take your measurements. First measurement you're going to be taking, you're going to be taking two measurements. The first one is for the spacer ring thickness, which is your the wedding ring that goes on your intermediate shaft right here. This determines end play. So, as the diagram shows, take your measurement. Seven seventy-eight. Okay, this is the middle measurement down to this dummy shaft in here. A seven seventy-eight shows you're in this area here, a one ninety-three to a one ninety-four. 
wedding spacer ring, okay? I have that here. Let's check it out. I have a selection of these. 193. Your next measurement is for your thrust plate thickness. This is a selective washer that goes in between your apply piston and the overdrive hub. So this is a very important measurement. They're both very important. So this is where you're gonna measure. You're gonna measure down from the gauging bar down to the hub where the bearing sits. And you're gonna measure it in six places and you're gonna take the average. One eighty four five one eighty five four. Now I've already done the six measurements and I already done my average. My number is one point eight four eight and one point eight four eight is right here and it tells me I need A 198 to 200 thousandths thick spacer plate, thick thr thrust plate. 198 to 200. And I have a 198 to 200 here. I have a 198. Those are the two measurements that you need to do. And after you do that, soak your overdrive brake clutches. Once your overdrive brake frictions are soaked and installed, you're done. The last thing you need to do, install your new output speed sensor. It's always a good idea to install new electronics on a RE transmission rebuild. And that should just about do it. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.